Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. For the Lord is in his holy temple, let all the earth keep silence before him. O magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Let us pray. Father God, as your word goes forth on today, we pray, Lord God, that your word lands on some good ground. Right now, Heavenly Father, I ask that you increase while I decrease. Create in me, O God, a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. I pray, Lord God, that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart are acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Speak to us through your word, Lord God, today, so that we may know the truth and be set free by it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The subject of our text today, saints, is entitled, Don't Go to Bed Angry. It's taken from the book of Ephesians, the fourth chapter, the 26 through 27 verses. I will read these things to you from the New International Version. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not let give the devil a foothold. The Spirit of the Lord God of hosts has instructed me to teach this particular text in the form of a parable. For those of you who don't know what a parable is, let me take this time to explain the meaning of the word for you so that you can understand it. A parable is a short story which contains important morals or life lessons. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, taught in parables so that his disciples could understand exactly what he was saying when he taught them. Now that we know these things, let us prepare our hearts to hear the parable of the couple who went to bed angry. A married couple had a huge fight one Friday evening. Both parties said some things in the heat of their anger that really hurt the other's feelings. To make matters even worse, both parties are too proud to apologize to the other, and they both go to bed angry with nothing resolved. The married couple sleeps in separate rooms that Friday night, and when they wake up that Saturday morning, no one says a single word to the other because both spouses are still fuming from the night before. The whole day goes by on Saturday with no apology from either spouse. As a matter of fact, both spouses barely said two words to each other. And again, both spouses go to bed angry in separate rooms with nothing resolved. When the couple wakes up on Sunday morning, the same routine applies from the last two days. Neither spouse barely says two words to the other, nor do they want to apologize for all of the hurtful things they said in the heat of their anger. The couple gets dressed separately and they go to church, still angry with each other from the nights before, because no one wants to be the bigger person and apologize to the other spouse for hurting their feelings when they have that terrible fight that Friday night. As the couple prepares to go to church, they leave in separate cars, still not wanting to have direct contact with the other spouse. Once the couple arrives at church, they put on their masks. You know those types of masks, where you pretend that everything is perfectly fine at home when the truth is, both of the people in this parable knew that they went to bed angry throughout the entire weekend. And they both slept in separate rooms because no one wanted to apologize to the other. As a matter of fact, the couple doesn't even look at each other while they're greeting their fellow church members. The husband speaks to his friends only, and the wife speaks to her friends. While service is going on, the couple doesn't even sit close to each other, just as they were used to doing in the past. In fact, neither spouse is able to enjoy the services because they're still mad at each other and they refuse to apologize to one another. This process, going to bed angry, sleeping in separate rooms, refusing to talk things over calmly and rationally went on for several days. Before you know it, weeks went by, then months, and even some years passed by. And in all of this wasted time, saints, nothing was resolved between the couple who kept going to bed angry. 
Sooner or later, the couple stopped being intimate with one another. And they continued to grow more and more distant. And then sooner or later, they just had enough. And they both decided that they would no longer be married to the other. And they filed for divorce. Because neither spouse wanted to apologize to the other. Neither spouse wanted to admit that they were wrong. They were too proud to admit that they were wrong because they were always in fear of wanting to be right. Instead of talking things over, they both went to bed angry. They both made this choice, saints, to go to bed angry with nothing resolved. They made a choice to go to bed angry with nothing resolved. Let's take a closer look at this parable for just a few minutes. There's some things that I stated in this parable that should hit home to you. What happened to this loving, God-fearing, married couple who made the choice to go to bed angry? By going to bed angry in separate rooms and not talking to one another, they allowed the devil to creep in and destroy their marriage. Anger that is not resolved in your relationships or marriage will lead to destruction sooner or later. Somewhere down the road, if you go to bed angry with your spouse or your significant other, I'm here to let you know today that this is a recipe for disaster. But again, this is your choice. This is your choice to go to bed angry. This is your choice. This is a choice that you make with your spouses or your significant others. Life is always about choices. There will always be something in your life that you will have to make a choice to do. Don't go to bed angry, saints. Talk things over with your spouses and significant others. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry. Don't give the devil a foothold to creep in like the serpent he is to destroy your happy home. Don't go to bed angry. Talk these things out. Fix these problems before you end up like the couple in this parable. That they've gotten so distant with one another, it was just like they were living separate lives. And the Bible teaches us that when a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing. That the two shall live together and become one flesh. You can't become one flesh in the spirit of God if you are living in separate rooms, if you are sleeping in separate beds, if you are not intimate with your spouses. You cannot become one flesh. And this is all triggered behind one thing and one thing only, saints, that the spouses in this parable that reveal our text today made the choice to go to bed angry. They made the choice that I'm not going to talk about this. I'm right and I know I'm right and I'm going to leave it at that. If you have that kind of attitude in your marriages and in your relationships, it is destined to fail. It is destined to fail. This is a recipe for disaster, saints. If you want your marriages to work and your relationships to work out the way God had ordained them to work out, don't go to bed angry. If you can't talk these things out to one another, you need to join hands and come in agreement in prayer to get that devil out of your homes, out of your relationships, out of your marriages, and out of your lives in the name of Jesus. You need to take that time and understand that the power of God is greater than the power of the devil. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Don't let that devil creep up on you for just a minute when you and your significant others or your spouses go to bed angry because when you go to bed angry ten times out of ten you're gonna wake up angry you're gonna wake up saying something or doing something that continues to hurt the person you love you're gonna to continue to build on this anger and build on it and build on it this is why wrath is one of the deadly sins because wrath can cause a lot of damage 
It can cause a lot of damage, saints. It can destroy marriages. It can destroy homes. It can break up relationships. It can cause so much damage because one person is too proud to admit that they were wrong. Don't go to bed angry no matter what happens in your relationships or your marriages. Don't let the sun go down on another opportunity for you to make things right before you turn in for the night. Don't allow yourself to be trapped like this couple was. They had gotten to the point where they didn't even want to look at each other. Saints, when you get to the point in your relationships where you don't even want to look at your spouses or your significant others, something is seriously wrong. And I encourage you through the power of Jesus Christ and the word that we have heard today to fix it. Fix it, saints. Don't go to bed angry. Even if you are not married or in a relationship, don't go to bed angry. Don't let the everyday stresses and trials of life cause you to go to bed with a frown on your face. If you are by yourself, if you are not in a relationship, you need to know that you have a relationship with God because God said in His Word that I am married to the backslider. You can go to God any day and any time. He's there all hours of the day, all hours of the night. He never sleeps. The God we serve never sleeps. You can go to Him with your problems. You can go to bed with some peace. Go to bed with peace that surpasses all understanding. Go to bed with Jesus on your mind. Go to bed with His Word on your mind. Go to bed with the Holy Spirit ministering to you as you went through your day. You might have gone through some hard days, some hard relationships, some hard breakups, people talking about you, people saying all kinds of things about you that were not true. But if you allow these things to follow you when you go to bed, ten times out of ten, you will pick them right back up when you wake up the next morning. Don't go to bed angry. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry. Don't let the devil have a foothold in your life because if you give that devil an inch, he's going to want to take a mile. If you let him be the passenger in your vehicle, and in your homes, in your marriages, in your life, he's going to want to drive. Don't give the devil room to creep in and destroy what you took years to build with your husbands, your wives, and your significant others. Don't give him that authority. You are a child of the Most High God. You have Christ in you. You have the authority to rebuke that devil and say, you know what? She's not talking to me or he's not talking to me. I'm going to be the bigger person and say that I was wrong. I apologize for what I said. Because by apologizing for what you said in the heat of anger, you start repairing some of the damage that you said when you said those hurtful words to the person you love. Love isn't supposed to hurt. Sometimes we might do things in the heat of our anger that we don't mean to do at all. Sometimes you may say some things that might hurt a person's feelings, but be man or woman enough to apologize for these things. Because we all make mistakes. We are all humans. If God can forgive, so can we. I like that statement, saints. If God can forgive, so can we. We can't afford to go to bed angry when the sake of our children are at stake. We can't afford to go to bed angry not being able to fix it because we're too proud to admit that we were wrong. Don't go to bed angry, saints. Don't let the sun pass you by for another day's end and you go to bed angry with nothing resolved. This is why this parable is so real to us now. Even in the midst of everything we go through in our marriages, relationships, and any other encounters we have in life. This is why this parable is so real. Because this couple serve as our example today that because they kept going to bed angry the devil kept speaking to both parties individually and then sooner or later the marriage was destroyed 
Satan comes to lie, cheat, steal, and destroy saints. He comes to destroy. But if you have enough word in you to know that if the Bible tells me in your anger do not sin, do not let the sun go down while I'm still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold, if you know just that, if nothing else, this should be enough authority to let you know that you need to fix everything that is wrong, every hurtful word that you have said before you lay your head on your pillow at night. If you know nothing else, if you've got nothing else out of this text, get that. Get that in your spirit. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. So in plain English, it just simply says, don't go to bed angry. Don't go to bed with so much built up anger that when you wake up the next day, you pick up where you left off. Don't go to bed angry, saints. This is so important, not just in marriages, not just in relationships, but in everyday life. Don't go to bed with anger in your heart. Because anger in your heart that you went to bed with, you will wake up with. For the Bible teaches us from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. If you start your day with a bad attitude, it's probably because you went to bed angry the night before. Be careful of this, saints. Be careful of how you go to bed at night. Didn't realize that that was important, was it? But it is. How you go to bed is probably how you're going to wake up. If you go to bed with prayer, you will wake up with prayer. If you go to bed angry, you're going to have a rotten day because you went to bed angry and nothing got resolved the night before. Remember, your day is determined by how you go to bed. If you go to bed with the Word of God on your heart, in your lips, and in your mind, you're going to wake up with a word from God the next day. But if you wake up angry, you allow the devil a foothold in your lives, and you will have a rotten day. And everybody knows that misery loves company. So if you are miserable, and you are going to bed angry, I encourage you to hear this text on today where you will know the truth that when you go to bed angry, you are giving Satan an opportunity to ruin your day, your relationships, and your life. Don't go to bed angry, saints. Your relationships, your homes, your marriages, your families depend on how you go to bed each and every night of your lives. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you, Lord God, that you spoke to us through this parable of the married couple who went to bed angry. Father, we know now that we need to fix these things right here and right now, that we can't allow the sun to go down in our lives, where we don't fix things and nothing gets resolved. Father, we bless your name on today, Lord God. We give you glory, honor, and praise. We praise you, Lord God, for you are worthy to be praised. Right now, Heavenly Father, I ask that you bless those who are sick and afflicted. Bless those who are in nursing homes. Bless those who are behind jail walls. Touch us right now with your word, Lord God. Speak through us. Speak to us to your word. Speak through me through this word on, on today, Lord God. Just continue to bless us, Lord God. Minister to us your word that we should not go to bed angry. We should not allow the devil a foothold in our lives. Father, we rebuke everything that is not like you in the name of Jesus. Touch us right now, O oh God, from the corner of our heads to the sole of our feet. Let no weapon that is formed against us prosper. For greater is he that is in us that he that is in the world. We serve the devil notice on today, Lord God. We render him powerless in the name of Jesus. Right now, Heavenly Father, just bless those on their way to work and bless those on their way to school. Bless those who are traveling the dangerous highways and byways, Lord God. Protect them with your loving arms of kindness, Lord God. Continue to just rain down your spirit upon us right now, Heavenly Father. Strengthen us and keep us. Bless us each and every day. Bless us as we go through this day and all of the days of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Saints, I have poured out what the Lord has given unto me through this parable that you learn something very valuable that if you want to bed angry it's gonna build and build and build 
and then sooner or later you're going to have enough and then you're going to give up on a beautiful relationship that took you years of time invested because if you waste time you cannot get it back time is one of those things you just can't get it back once it's gone don't spend days weeks months or years just like the couple did in this parable not speaking to one another sleeping in separate rooms not being intimate with one another not even wanting to look at the other because they were too proud to admit that they were wrong and that they were sorry for hurting the other person's feelings there's nothing wrong with saying that I'm sorry that makes you human that means you have a heart that means you care enough about that person to let them know that if I said or did anything to hurt your feelings I'm truly sorry apology doesn't make you weak it makes you strong it makes you realize that just by those two little words I can fix this so the next three little words come out of my mouth could be I love you I'm sorry I hurt you I love you you can fix this this is definitely something you can fix but now you have a choice as we get ready to close on today you have a choice to make will you continue to go to bed angry or will you fix it before the sun goes down I encourage you to fix it your relationships and your marriages are too valuable to just let them go by the wayside you can't get that time back if you spent 14 15 16 20 plus years in a relationship or a marriage you cannot get that time back when it's gone I encourage you to fix it don't let that sun go down while you are still angry don't give the devil no room not even an inch to destroy your homes and your lives and your families don't give him room because if you give him room he's gonna want to take over trust me he will want to drive if you let him become a passenger in your homes your lives your families in any part of your life he's gonna want to drive he wants to have full control over you because he knows that you are a child of God and he wants to destroy you in your faith and the closest thing to you that will destroy you and break you down is the person that you're involved with your husband your wife or your significant other he wants to use the closest people to you to break you down so that you give up on your faith in God and start doing the things of the world when you get ready to travel today please wear your seat belts please be careful on the road don't text and drive pay attention to what you're doing on the road because there are other motorists on the road there are innocent children passing through in school buses so much can happen road construction there's so much can happen in one day why do I keep saying this because it is probably going to save the life of one person that hears the closing remarks from this message I want to save somebody's life with that to be real and to be serious about that because life is too short you only have one life and when it's gone you can't get another one you can't come back as a fish or a moose or something like that you are designed to be you there's no one like you when God made you he broke the mold and I, I'm saying that because I care I'm saying that because I love you as as believers love you with the love of Christ and I don't want to see anything happen to you on the roads when you are traveling that's why I keep saying it at the end of each message this is so important this is the difference between life and death paying attention to what you are doing on the highways it is the difference between life and death until next time take care of yourselves and each other God bless you amen